Welcome to Rediscovering the Beatles with Mark Morris. I'm Mark. Today I wanted to talk about an album uh, that's not really Beatle related, but I wanted to tie in some uh, Beatle stories as a way to get to this album I want to talk about. So uh, this is going to be the story of John Lennon meeting Alice Cooper and the rock and roll nightmare that uh, ensued. So in uh, the 1970s, uh, during uh, John Lennon's uh, infamous Lost Weekend Away from Yoko Ono, he was in uh, Los Angeles and ran into the likes of Alice Cooper. Um, Alice Cooper um, was president of a club called, a drinking club called the Hollywood Vampires. And John Lennon became a part of this club. So let me, let me uh, read this Alice quote. Uh, as he talks about the uh, the Hollywood vampires. Uh, Alice Cooper says, It was at a perfect time. There were a lot of 70s rock stars living in L.A., and we went to the Rainbow Club every single night, and pretty much it ended up being a boys' drinking club. We would sit up, sit up at the roof of this place, and it was always the same people, me, Bernie Toppin, Harry Nielsen, Mickey Dolenz, and John Lennon would come in every once in a while, and Ringo would come in every once in a while, but it was sort of a last man standing drinking club. And we would sit there every night waiting for what Keith Moon was going to be wearing. You know, he'd walk in, and he was certainly a member with a handshake and everything, and we'd we go, who's he going to be today? Is he going to be Hitler or is he going to be Queen Elizabeth? He would never disappoint. Let's put it that way. But it was sort of the same kind of drinking club that John Barrymore, Errol Flynn, and W.C. Fields had. It was just more rock and roll one. So that's the club, or, uh, the drinking club. Alice Cooper, of course, was the president of the club. And I'm sure you've read uh, or know about some of... Uh, John's annex and stuff during this time, uh, the Smothers Brothers concert and, and all that stuff. I'm not going to go into that. But what I find interesting is not only were John Lennon and Alice Cooper, two of my rock and roll heroes, uh, getting along together and part of this club, but they both released albums in February of 1975. So... Um, John Lennon released Rock and Roll. Um, this is all cover songs um, of old rock and roll songs. Uh, I got this album when uh, I, th I think it might have been my birthday uh, a couple months after it came out, but it may have been Christmas of that year. I just remember getting it and I opened it up and I remember when I was peeling down the paper, I saw John Lennon rock and roll, and I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. Um, I was a, a big a Beatle purist at the time. I wasn't keen on their cover songs and stuff, and so when I saw this was all old rock and roll songs, I, uh, I didn't really give it the chance it probably deserved. I listened to it, and there were certain songs on here I liked. I really, of course, I liked uh, uh, I liked uh, Ready, Teddy, Rip It Up, and You Can't Catch Me, um, Stand By Me. I like that. I actually like Beep Bop Lula, Lula, too. But these weren't, this is not what I really wanted to hear from John Lennon. This wasn't a great album to me. Uh, I have come to appreciate it over the years, but this is the original album I got in 1975. Uh, my guess is, I haven't even looked at it for a long time, but my guess is it's probably in pretty good condition just because, uh, just because I didn't play it very much. Um, my dog's over here looking at me and giving me sad eyes. Hi, yes, sir. Um, and I did come to appreciate it, 
but I've never loved the album. It would never rank high in my John Lennon albums. But this is all just a vehicle to get to an album I absolutely do love and uh, that has been reissued recently. Um, Alice Cooper, Welcome to My Nightmare. Um, he released this in February of 1975. It was uh, his first solo album since uh, since the disbanding of the Alice Cooper group. So um, with producer Bob Ezrin, uh, just came out with a kick-ass album. I just, uh, if you've seen my video on You Never Forget Your First Three, this was the first album I ever bought with my own money. Beatles were second. Alice Cooper was first. I love this album. Uh, and then this reissue, what got me interested in this, and this is a, a little story too, which I should have known was going to happen. When I first started trying to uh, replenish my vinyl collection that I'd given away in the 90s, my aim was just to get the Beatles and Beatle-related albums. I, w I didn't want to go crazy and start uh, trying to gather all these old artists that I really loved. I just wanted to focus on the Beatles. Well, um, Alice, this Alice Cooper album uh, took me away from that strategy. I first saw a video on uh, a review of this this reissue from uh, Mike's Vinyl Experience, and he talks about this with great passion and um, much more articulate about this than I will be uh, just because uh, he, he speaks about some of the technical aspects. And, and uh, I wouldn't be probably what anybody would call an audiophile, but I just love these good records i love the sound of them and this reissue it's uh let me make sure i'm not missing anything it's the autophile series released in 2024 the atlantic 75 series uh mastered from original analog tape cut at 45 rpm and pressed on 180 gram vinyl just a really beautiful look at that just a really beautiful album the records are fantastic um it's a double lp release lacquers cut by chris bellman at bernie grunman mastering and pressed at quality record pressings anyway i saw uh on mike's vinyl experience him review this album and i'm like i got so excited i ordered the album uh that night and uh then when it arrived uh and I started playing it. I can't tell you how excited I was to hear it again. Uh, like I said, I gave away most of my albums in 1990, but I saved like uh, about 40 that I just couldn't get rid of. My original Alice Cooper, Welcome to My Nightmare, the first record I'd ever bought was one that I'd always saved, but I played the hell out of that thing. I just played it to death. Um, me and my friend Brian, we would play these Alice Cooper albums, but Welcome to My Nightmare was by far our favorites. Uh, we played these things. It's in terrible condition. I showed it in that video, uh, You Never Forget Your First Three. It's in terrible condition. I would never play it on a, a decent turntable. So uh, I was so excited to hear this clear, crisp, just almost dead, quiet recording that um uh rachel's ghost um the the uh, youtube channel very into music and uh, beatles uh i sent her a a picture of me with the album gushing about how much i love this album because i was so excited i didn't know who else i could talk to my friend brian would have been the first choice but he died in 2002 and uh i didn't know who to express my excitement too so i sent an email to rachel's ghost with a picture of me with this album saying how much i loved it of course she she'd already heard it and uh um anyway i'm a little embarrassed by that now but it's a double album uh just because it's cu uh, cut at 45 rpm 
um, I did. Uh, I was so excited when I got it. I put it on the turntable, and it. Uh, I the turntable was at thirty three RPMs, and so it started. And I'm like, oh my god, something's wrong. I got a defective copy. Then I, I then I remembered it was forty five RPM, and that's why it's on two records now. Um, anyway, this is a beautiful album, and unlike the original one I got in seventy five, it has this gatefold in there just very cool um i'm not going to pull the records out because i'm afraid i'll i'll damage them or something but um these songs are i forgot how just awesome these songs are and they sound so great on this uh reissue welcome to my nightmare just uh a very ominous start to the album. Devil's Food. I remember listening to Devil's Food and turning it way up and thinking, I really like Acid Rock. I, I considered that Acid Rock at the time, but I just thought it was just the wildest thing. Uh, um, the Black Widow, right between Devil's Food and Black Widow, Vincent Price comes in, does some narration like as a curator of a, of a museum fantastic i was 12 years old when i picked this album up and it was the most i would i just stared at the cover i read the back over and over again read over the lyrics um but uh vincent price on a record you you couldn't have been more uh in tune with me at that time what's funny is this so in 1975 alice cooper had this reputation with parents and older people about being this this mad man mad man that killed bunnies on stage all sorts of crazy stories but what was funny about Alice Cooper it was the first time I realized that adults really didn't understand what was going on and that I had a better understanding I knew Alice Cooper had a sense of humor and there's this album as dark as it is it's just full of humor, and it's just so awesome. Uh, anyway, it goes into The Black Widow. Some folks, um, a great song. There's a line in there that just that kind of freaked me out when I first heard it because uh, I was pretty sure I knew what he was talking about, and then uh, people confirmed that, yeah, it's like some folks crave a blue lady and i'm like blue lady i'm like is he talking about dead people and of course he was um then the big ballad was only women bleed this was on the radio all the time everybody loved this song people that would never love alice cooper loved this song and i always thought it was funny i'm like man if people went out and bought this album because of that one song they'd probably be surprised alice kind of did that a lot i noticed on his albums there was, always seemed to be a They're ballad there that would make the radio um, and i'm always uh, department of youth i just thought was the funniest song in the world some of the greatest lyrics um at the end of course it's uh He's, he's, oh, does it, I forgot the name of the children's course that was part of this. Oh, I don't, I'm not going to look it up. But there's a children's course as part of this song, and he's, uh, uh, they're repeating his lines, and one of the lines is, uh, we got the power, and the kids say, we got the power. And then he says, uh, who has the power? We have the power. And then as the song's fading out, he, he says, and who gave it to you? And you can hear the kids saying, Donny Osmond. And then Alice Cooper yelling, what? As the song fades out. Just thought that was hilarious. I hope I did that justice in recreating it. Cold Ethel. So if I had doubts about blue ladies talking about dead people, Cold Ethel, absolutely. Uh, necrophilia all the way. But with a sense of humor, there's actually a funny um, Dear Abby um, routine, routine, a Dear Abby um, uh, letter where she's talking about, she's addressed it to Alice Cooper and say, necrophilia is not funny. And Alice Cooper actually responds to it. Excellent response. Alice Cooper uh, in a battle of wits with Abby. 
Um, unbelievable. If I if I find it, I'll link to it. Um, so Cole Dethel, funny, funny song. Uh, uh, years ago is the next one. So I, I kind of told this story in my uh, You Never Forget Your First Three video, but uh, when my parents were gone, nobody was at home but me and my little brother, I would turn off all the lights in the house. I would start with years ago. It's kind of a creepy, uh, oh, my toys are broken. Just kind of a creepy uh, feel to it. And uh, my brother Tom wasn't real hip on this album uh, when he was 10 years old. So he was already nervous about it. But I'd turn off all the lights. And then when he complained about me, listening to it in the dark i'd start walking around like a zombie scared the hell out of him uh my mom worked nights and she left a number for where we could call her if there were was ever an emergency my brother tom would call her up and then hand me the phone and says mom wants to talk to you and then my mom would say turn that record off and stop acting like you're dead Anyway, I thought it was funny. I don't know if you're watching this, Tom, but it's one of those things I've never apologized for, and I probably won't. Just funny, fun times. Uh, and then years ago, we'd go into Steven, which uh, does this little dual personality thing. I'm a great big man. No, let's be a little boy. Very freaky if you're a kid, but just... Uh, being in the horror, into the horror genre and stuff, staying up late nights watching these old creature features, this stuff was like gold to me. And then the awakening, uh, just, just, uh, uh, just, uh, probably to me, it's probably the most disturbing song on the album. It's, it's very short, two minutes and 25 seconds, uh, I'm not going to say any more than that. Uh, just an awesome album. Uh, so I wanted to talk about this album because I do love it so much. Um, one of the things that happens when you name your channel Rediscovering the Beatles is is you kind of paint yourself into a corner. And I, uh, my my initial idea was to... to uh, document my journey of regaining all my Beatle albums. Well, one thing that's happened is I've almost completed my collection. It's already better than what I had when I gave them away in the 1990s. And I didn't even give them all away. There were some I just couldn't part with. But uh, it's already better than what it was. There's, there's one or two that I had that I haven't got yet and I'm going to start focusing more making my uh, solo Beatles a little more robust that kind of thing but um, I got it done so quickly um, I almost think I'm almost thinking of changing my channel name to uh, rediscovering vinyl but I think I'm going to keep it as rediscovering the Beatles and do things like this where uh, you know there's a little connection between the Beatles or a Beatle and another artist and maybe make a separate playlist of non-Beatle uh, album talks but I wanted to talk about this album just because I love it so much and this reissue is so good uh, I want to thank uh, Mike's vinyl experience for getting me worked up enough to go out of my uh, beetle buying frenzy to to purchase Alice Cooper uh, so good and then uh, now I bought some Harry Nielsen uh, another pre-order of an Alice Cooper album I have a feeling this this vinyl collection thing is going to go much further than I anticipated so i hope you're going to stay along for the ride thank you for listening to this i really do appreciate you guys listening to all this stuff and um listening to be me being excited about uh these nostalgic albums i'm just i'm just as i get older i'm more unapologetically nostalgic i love these old things that bring me back to uh my childhood or teenage years or early years this was a big one um, thanks for listening 
Uh, I hope this video finds you in a good place and that you're happy and that you are surrounding yourself with things that you are passionate about, that you're happy about. If you are not, try to find something you're passionate about and, and surround yourself with it. That's what I think makes you feel better as a person, makes your life more worthwhile, gives it a richness that everybody wants. Um, this, uh, that daily uh, just hanging on in quiet desperation, that's not for you. Find something you love, even if it's Alice Cooper, and surround yourself with it, and I think you'll find your things will start looking up for you. Anyway, thank you very much. Thanks for being here. And I'll talk to you all again very soon.